Have you ever watched a competitive game or your favorite streamer and thought to yourself, yeah, what they're doing makes sense, I could totally do that in my own games, this looks so easy when they do it, then you load into a match yourself. You kind of know what you should be doing, but it feels so much harder than when you watch someone else do it. You can't seem to get the same results, and you wonder what you're doing wrong. This is actually one of the major problems we notice that holds so many players back from climbing. The game knowledge required to hit high ranks of solo queue like Diamond or even up to Challenger isn't that demanding. The issue is that lower elo players just have a harder time applying the knowledge they already have when they're in a game. In this guide, we'll break down ways to help you fix this problem and instantly start performing better. Before we get into it though, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With premium courses for every role and skill taught by the best players, Skillcapped is the perfect platform to help take your game to the next level. Take our Wave Control course. While you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. Or maybe you just like seeing your opponent's health go to zero, then you'll love our trading course. We even have a skill test at the end so you can see how good you really are. Players just like you are leaving 5-star reviews and raving at how helpful they are. The best part, it's completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, now let's get into it. To make things easier to process, we'll be loading up a replay of our challenger expert Hector playing Kassadin versus a gold elo LeBlanc. So immediately into the laning phase, Hector clicks on LeBlanc and we can see her starting items. Just think about it for a few seconds. Imagine you're this LeBlanc versus Kassadin. What do you think about this corrupting potion she's bought? Is it right or is it wrong? What are your thoughts on it? This doesn't really make sense what she has. She has corrupting potion. This is something I really... I don't like to see. When am I ever gonna harass this LeBlanc? She could have went D ring and not bought any potions because I'm never harassing her. There's just no world in which I ever beat her, right? So unironically, I think starting D ring or Cull or D blade or longsword, anything like that would have been better than this corrupting bot. She's just autopilot building. Now, don't worry, you didn't have to break all of that down, but we're certain 80-90% to 90 of our viewers probably arrived at a similar conclusion. It's not hard to know that you don't need sustain versus a champion like Cassidy, therefore it makes no sense to go C-Pot. And that's the problem. If we asked this LeBlanc the same question, she'd probably know the correct answer. So why did she mess this up then? How come lower elo players who have the game knowledge to climb are unable to make consistently good decisions in their games? There's two main culprits, so let's start with the easiest one to fix. Active decision making. This is a problem many players don't realize, but the Decisions in this game aren't actually that hard. The problem is making them while doing everything else required to play well. In game, you're having to constantly click back and forth, left and right, then you have to hover your mouse over minions, press spells on them, actively track your opponent's cooldowns, etc. There's a lot going on. This is why backseat gaming is so common if you ever watch a streamer or a competitive game. It's not hard to see the correct decision to make when you're not juggling a billion other tasks in game. The reason high elo players and pros can make good decisions consistently despite that is because almost everything they do is based on pattern recognition. They've just played tens of thousands of games at this point, so they're able to make decent to great decisions even without thinking about it all that much. You unfortunately don't have that luxury of thousands of past experiences. One of the main fixes for those of you watching is to take those moments in the game where not a lot is happening to really think about what you're going to do. This can be while you're channeling your recall, walking back to lane while you're dead, or better yet, at the start of the game where nothing is happening. Here's an example of where even as a challenger player, Hector does exactly that. And what I'm gonna do is a bit odd, but I'm actually gonna start tier the goddess and not buy any potions. Now, the reason for this is because I kind of want to just cheat a recall in this lane. We won't bore you with his full breakdown, but that's not a difficult decision to make. But it's easy because he just took the time to think about it. And because he had already pre-planned what he was doing, it made things that much easier to follow through with, leading to a great early start. And he saved himself 100 gold on his initial potions because of it. Like we said though, there's two culprits behind poor decisions in low elo. Maybe LeBlanc did take the time to think about her purchase, but she failed at the second issue we're going to talk about. Confidence. Many players have this issue where they don't trust their own knowledge. This LeBlanc may have seen videos of players like Showmaker starting attack damage as LeBlanc versus a matchup he wants to bully. But in her mind, LeBlanc may not think that she has the skill to pull this off. After all, she's not Showmaker. She probably doesn't know what she's doing or how to punish properly by starting a longsword. So it's better to be safe and start the standard items, right? Players don't realize how not having confidence holds them back from a ton of easy decisions that can have amazing results. Let's just test your knowledge again. Imagine 
imagine a lane like this, where two waves are crashed evenly, but slightly closer to Vladimir's side of the lane. If both Orianna and Vladimir left lane at this time, who is technically favored? Oriana, of course. Because of the even minion rule, the wave will push toward her while both sides are gone. When they're both back, Oriana will have way more minions to farm on her side of the lane. That's a really simple concept almost all of you should get right instantly. So let's take a look at another game from Hector's POV. Vladimir roamed, so Hector crashed a wave at his tower, then began to move, causing a very similar situation to what we just talked about. So right now, you see how the wave is like this? I just need to buy time. Even if I have to use my flash here, it doesn't matter. Now, many of you could get to this decision to collapse here, but how many of you would be so confident in your choice that you'd be willing to blow your flash just to delay Vladimir from getting back for five or 10 more seconds? Because right now the wave is pushing towards me. So every second that I'm wasting from these guys is good for me. So we should fight here. Do you see how there's no doubt in his decision making? There's none of the, hmm, my teammate might misplay this, or maybe we're overextending. No, he trusts that he's making the right choice, and he's 100% following through with it. That's why he's so prepared to blow his flash without any hesitation to keep the play going. Yes, he's a challenger player, and he's smurfing, and he's better than every other player in that game. Of course he's confident, right? But it's much easier to climb and make good decisions if you trust your own game knowledge, which you definitely should. Most of you are smarter at this game than you realize. You see this? Perfect. So that's why we're fighting. We're never fully committing. You'll notice my positioning was never fully committal either. As long as I didn't die there, I'm hard winning. Overall, that was a pretty easy decision to make, right? It's not some super impressive next level challenger play. In fact, many of you could have maybe done that even better. It's just about having the confidence to follow through with it. So now with all this in mind, let's go back to that Cassidy game from the start. Let's see if you have the simple game knowledge required to shut down Hector as LeBlanc this game and how this LeBlanc failed at doing so. So kicking things off at the start of the lane, her items aren't the greatest, but that's not stopping her from winning this lane. What would your early game plan be to shut down Cassidy? Not a trick question here. You want to use your range advantage to harass him early on, so you build a slow push and punish him every time he goes for a CS. This is the basics of the basics that almost everyone knows about in regards to ranged versus melee matchups. But pay attention to how LeBlanc is playing this lane. She had already built up a small wave lead to start her slow push, but she kept auto attacking the minions way more than she needed to. Everyone knows that to build a big slow push, you just last hit as late as possible only to score your CS. This allows you to keep your slow push going as long as possible and to build as big of a crash as you can. Again, if we ask this LeBlanc player, she definitely knows that. But in game, she was probably lazy and didn't actively think about her game plan before the lane started. Now she's just kind of mindlessly going through the motions in lane, which is probably why it seems like she's playing randomly. As a result, take a look at how quickly LeBlanc pushed the wave and how small her crash was. She's not been able to get a single point of harass so far, and the lane looks completely stable for Hector. This is a big problem for this lane. In a lot of range versus melee matchups, a lot of your harass comes during levels one to three when the melee is unable to fight back at all. After level three though, most melee champions unlock their full combo and can start fighting back in most matchups. Thankfully for LeBlanc, Kassadin is even weaker than that and he has almost zero agency until level six, so she still got a shot at winning this lane. That being said, let's ask you another question. Look at Kassadin's resources. He's running Fleet Footwork, Doran's Shield, and he's still full HP. And to top it all off, Hector is running Teleport. From this spot, do you think that if LeBlanc keeps pushing and trying to harass, that she could shove Cassidy out of lane before he's level 6? Look at this lane state, right? Is she ever going to beat me? No. Like, she hasn't done enough, and I'm already level 3, and I'm still full resources, right? Not a tough question, right? She's messed up already, so there's no world she can ever harass Cassidy enough to shove him out of lane. Okay, so if she can't go for a harass win condition, what other option would a LeBlanc have versus a champion with zero wave control like Cassidy? So what she should do is not push the wave and set up Shaco ganks. Right now, the wave is guaranteed to push into her. That's not too hard to figure out, is it? Everyone knows that waves bounce back after crashing in a tower, and LeBlanc is really good at setting up ganks. That's a decision a majority of players could easily see. Problem is, very few low elo players would ever make that decision in their own games. Think about the process to get there. 
Right now, LeBlanc has to take a moment and make an active decision to stop pushing the wave. It's unfortunately a bit hard for her to do that while trying to play the lane out. As a piece of advice, sometimes lower elos, we'd recommend to just take 5 seconds or so to play back and give yourself time to think about the decisions you're making. Again, you don't have tens of thousands of games to draw from. The next step is to have the confidence to follow through with it. Problem is, that's pretty hard. At this point, LeBlanc would have to completely accept that she can't win this lane on her own anymore and that she has to adapt. Problem is, she has to push down contradicting thoughts, like maybe I can still harass him out of lane, or I really don't think my jungler will gank if I do this, which is why very, very few players would actually go through with that decision. And instead, the lane goes on and it looks like this. Okay, so she's doing a good job now. She's letting it push a bit. Oh, as I say that, this is going to delay the push even further. Stop auto attacking. Stop auto attacking the wave. Stop autoing. She's going to W me here. W me. Nice. Perfect. As a quick tip, what Hector is doing here is baiting the LeBlanc to damage the wave even more. So it stays on this side of the lane where she's not achieving much without her jungler. So again, baited. Oh, there's Shaco. Just got to be careful here. Get experience. So right now, imagine if she hadn't been hitting the wave, it would be around here, and this gank would have been really deadly, and I'd have to blow my flash. But instead, look where I am. I'm just chilling, aren't I? And that's the entire story of the lane phase versus this LeBlanc. How many of you were able to easily follow along and know what to do every time we asked a question? We're certain a majority of you could. Many of you definitely have the knowledge to know how to shut Hector down in this game and bruise his ego a bit. Problem is, many players struggle with actually applying their knowledge in-game, and many of you would look like this LeBlanc. The wave never went past the halfway point for Hector, and he got level 6 completely for free. From there, it's just classic Cassidy in things where he takes over the game when he's not shut down. This is one of the main things we urge you to practice. You're not a no-life challenger player who has spent their entire life on this game and can make snap decisions. It's okay to take moments in a game to think about your decisions to make sure you're actively making the right choice most of the time. Then, just have the confidence to follow through with your actions. Trust us, most of you are smarter at this game than you think you are. The worst that can happen is that you were wrong so you just learn from it. The upside is that you consistently make better choices in all of your games from now on. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Our service is completely risk-free as you're kept safe with rank-up insurance. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, that's a wrap on this one, guys. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.